Okay, uh, hello again. This is now Tower Lesson number 79. And I have, I have a, a starting point. So be, because we know there are 78 cards in a deck, and this is Lesson 79, this is a bit like Round 2. And so I'd like to suggest that you, no matter how long you've been at the Tarot, and no matter how much you know about anything, I think I'd like to suggest that you start either writing your own tarot book or at least making notes about what you might consider putting into a tarot book for yourself. Maybe you publish it one day, but it's more like how how do you how do you learn the tarot? And I think what you do is you pick a card and you start You've got the empress again but um th this is because as nasim taleb pointed out if you begin with the theory and then go to the practice you automatically you fail it never works um whereas if you begin with the practical and get used to it and gain some experience then go to the theory you've got at least got a chance of succeeding so i'm thinking that rather than talk about um major trumps and what they're meant to be and minor trumps and um theoretical explanations about whatever i think what we do is um we start somewhere and see what happens so we've got the Queen of Pentac the Queen of Cups and the Ace of Swords falling out. Okay, so I didn't mean for that to happen. As I say, I've got the uh, the 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 one the, the starting point is this is like round two, and I'm going to suggest that you do this exercise for yourself, where you shuffle for a moment and pick a card, and then let the card guide you or lead you in a particular direction so here we've got the Queen of Cups and the Ace of Swords and because it's a picture you don't need to know anything there's no requirement to know numbers or zodiac information or tarot information at that what what is a card particular what's a card supposed to mean because what we do is we you write down what you notice and use what you notice as a step to a bit of study because maybe we've got the ace of swords here so you might think okay how do you make a sword and because it's swords i remember watching kill bill volume one when uma thurman goes to japan and she buy and she gets a samurai sword so that the thing is when I say you don't need to know anything, I honestly mean that. And I think what you do is you have lived and you've done well, you've done badly, you've learned things, you've not learned things as well. But you are you as you are at the moment. So take that as a starting point. And whatever card comes up, start from from that card and to go with it so I hadn't thought of the Ace of Swords as being particularly a samurai sword but maybe what I do is I, I begin to add to a to-do list and to-do list is how do you make a sword or I, I could look at a video on how to make a sword but when you when I think of it um, I, I know enough about I don't really know anything about Japanese swords but I know enough that it's there's great skill involved in making a samurai sword and if you're a samurai with a sword you don't just leave it lying around you have to you you take care of it and you pay attention so maybe with the ace of swords we're beginning to get some or I'm beginning to get some ideas about the suit itself or this particular card so it could be the suit but it could be this ace of swords so i've got a sheet of paper and what you, and you get a loose leaf notebook or something where you can and i i say, say that instead of a notebook 
because with a loose leaf you can write down ace of swords and then on the next page you can write down swords and you can swap them back and forth and you can put an insert or you can put extra pages after this page whereas if you've got a notebook like this for instance this one um it's you you're stuck with the order in which you write the information so i'm thinking um loose leaf paper or a three ring binder or something like that so maybe with the ace of stars we begin to write down ideas like um paying attention or taking good care of your tools or taking good care of whatever it happens to be that the ace of swords represents maybe if if you're if the question is about a relationship and the ace of swords comes up you have to take care of people or with the ace of swords upright it's a good idea to take care of people right so be nice to them be considerate of them if they've got a problem maybe listen to it or see what you can do to fi to to figure out what what would be helpful to them that's from the idea of a, a samurai warrior taking care of his weapon also if you think about how to make a sword um, there's great skill involved in producing the finished product the sword and maybe that's what's going to be important about it you, that's what we discover is going to be important about the suit of swords that it may look like a heavy instrument like a hammer but it's not really it's really quite it's not that it's delicate because it's strong and it's robust and you can knock it around and it's not going to break easily but um there's a lot of skill and expertise went into making the sword so maybe you write down the ace of swords skill expertise quality the advantage of good quality because if you if you get a samurai sword that's cheap and you you hit it with another sword at break you don't want that and maybe that's what the ace of swords represent reversed would represent where um you're dealing with things that break easily or things that you expect to be strong but they're they turn out to be not strong or they turn out to have weaknesses or vulnerabilities that you hadn't expected so maybe with the questioner who somebody asks about will they get a promotion and you get the ace of swords reversed you may ask them what have they ignored what have they not bothered dealing with or what have they assumed in connection with the promotion that they haven't thought about and you get that from the, the idea that we thought let's say six months ago that the ace of swords can represent um attention to detail and pay and and skill and expertise but it's something that's upside down there isn't attention to detail or there wasn't enough attention to detail or you missed important details there's all these different possibilities and what you find is if you do the homework so to speak if you do the background of looking at any particular card and seeing what you can do with it and seeing what you discover you'll find that as you talk about the card in a reading with a questioner you'll automatically be highlighting or talking about what's important for that questioner to do with that question and it's based on the card it comes from the card but it doesn't come from a meaning it comes from things you thought about a month ago or six months ago or things that you wrote down in your notebook and i think that's how you learn the learn to read cards you start somewhere and make notes about what it what it makes you think about or what it makes you wonder about and then later when you've got an actual question and a questioner and the card comes up you talk about it but you're going to automatically talk importantly and talk relevantly about the answer for that questioner 
And then we've got the, okay, so I'm saying write your own book. So on the one hand, maybe maybe what you do is you take this ace of swords and think, okay, first thing I need to do is understand the suit of swords. Um, and then you think about what do swords represent? So we've got, um, it's a weapon, you can attack, you can defend, you can damage people, you can def use it to defend yourself against other people who are looking to damage you. Um, but there's a crown above here as well. And so presumably, this is a kind of victory in its own way because the crown is at the top so that with the ace of swords upside down, it's defeat because you could have been the, win the winner and got the crown, but you didn't. So you could write down on your piece of paper, victory or defeat, and think about what's the nature of victory. Maybe, maybe you were victorious because you took on a challenge and you proved that you were worth a worthy winner because of what you did or because of the actions that you undertook or because of the activities you became involved in, you ended up or you, you were a winner. Whereas with the Ace of Swords upside down, for one reason or another, you didn't win. Maybe because you didn't put enough energy into it or what, who knows. So, um, that's from the Ace of Swords. It's a few ideas to get started with and see then later you can go back to your notes about the Ace of Swords and maybe in the, main, in, in the meantime you've discovered something about a sword or you've, you've had a, a, um, a, a random idea when you were least expecting it. So it's important that you pay attention to your, what you're thinking about as well and write down ideas that come to you rather than think that's not important. Write it down and then later decide if it's important or not. And you'll find that you're fleshing out um, the meaning or possible meanings or what you might talk about with any particular card. And then you can do things like, okay, we've got three things here and three things here. What does that mean? What's that all about? And maybe that's what you do as well. You, it's not just writing down things you think or things you come up with. Maybe it's questions you've got about the card itself. So you're asking yourself questions. You're asking the cosmos questions and it's going to give you answers. And that's why you need to pay attention to the thoughts that you have or what you come across because you're going to get the answer back. Even if you don't think you, you, you're going to get the answer, you're going to get the answer one way or the other. So maybe what we write down is, what does this hand in a cloud represent? And then what are the three um, little blobs here of yellow and three here? Why are there three in one side and three in the other? And then we've got nothing much going on in the background. It's a gray sky. Is that important? Or in what way might it be important? So maybe what we do is we've got the idea that um, what's right in front of you is important. Forget about the background. So somebody's got a problem and they start talking about the ins and outs and who else is involved and why it's not working out and why it didn't work out in the past. And you say to them, forget all that. Focus on what you've got right in front of you right now. Forget about the background. The background's not important. It's just going to get in the way. And maybe that's a thought that you write down um, and that can be why there's nothing much going on in the background because you might want to look for the other aces, which I probably can't find easily. Um, and you look and see what's going on in the background. See, there's the two of swords. And we look, so we've got a blue sky, but we've got a moon up here. So there's something going on in the background with the two of swords that isn't going on in the ace of swords. So something has changed from here to here. Partly if we've gone from gray to blue, which may or may not be important. 
I mean, it's it it depends on the question and the question and all the rest of it. So, um, I'm thinking about the time here, and that's about a quarter of an hour. I've got a clock over there that you can't see, so I'm going to stop at this point, and lesson number eighty will be the same kind of thing as lesson seventy nine just to give you another example of what you might do for yourself to learn the tarot. So I'm going to cover this up. I'm not going to, well, okay, so I'm going to stop now and um, uh, I'll be back in a few days. So thanks for watching. If you have comments or questions, let me know and we'll take it from there. Okay, bye-bye.